and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we'll learn about TypeScript's basic types. I'll provide links to example source code and all resources in the description below. Let's start today by covering some terminology. That is the words that you will likely hear or read and what those words mean as you learn about TypeScript. Strongly typed languages demand the specification of data types, and that's what we do in TypeScript. TypeScript is a strongly typed language where we specify the types of data that we are using, and that helps to self-document, hint, and enforce our code. Loosely typed languages do not require type specification. And you've experienced this already with JavaScript. JavaScript is a loosely typed language, which you may also see referred to as a weakly typed languages. Those terms are synonymous. This relates to static typing and dynamic typing. However, statically typed and dynamically typed is not the same thing as strongly typed and loosely typed. With that consideration, you should know that a programming language that is strongly typed can be either statically or dynamically typed. TypeScript is a statically typed language, and that means types are checked at compile time. In contrast, JavaScript is a dynamically typed language, and types are checked at runtime. Just a few of the TypeScript benefits include self-documenting code, catching errors during development instead of while running an application, and it's great for teams. Our starter code today is the code we finished lesson one with. I'm just in a different folder now named lesson two. I'm going to select all of the code in our main TS with control A, and then just press backspace to get rid of that code and go ahead and save an empty file so we can start over. I'm also going to open up the terminal. And if you remember from lesson one, we can start TypeScript with TSC. Then I'm going to give it the watch flag, which is a dash W. And so it will take any TypeScript file that we create in our source directory and then compile that to a JavaScript file that we have inside of our build directory and then inside of a JS folder. So I'll press enter here. And we set all of that up in lesson one in our tsconfig.json file. So if you haven't watched that, of course, go back to lesson one and you will learn how to set all of that up. I'm going to go ahead and close the terminal window for now. And let's talk about some more terminology. I wanted to start out the lesson with that short little presentation on terminology because it can get confusing as we talk about these things. We're also going to be talking about how TypeScript infers what type of data we're working with. So let's quickly look at that. I'll type a variable here called my name, and I'll just set that equal to Dave. And now this is where TypeScript infers. This looks just like JavaScript. It doesn't look any different. But if I mouse over to get some IntelliSense hints here, I see let my name, and then it says string. TypeScript has inferred what type of data I am creating here with the string because I created a string like I would in JavaScript. Now, this is implicit, so that's another term. So besides inferring meaning, I have implicitly shown that I'm using a string. So that means it just wasn't strictly stated. So being explicit means I'm going to absolutely state that this is a string. Now I can do that in TypeScript by putting a colon and then putting what type of data I have before the equal sign. So now I have explicitly said that this is a string. TypeScript no longer has to infer any type of meaning either because I said it's a string. So it's no longer inferring. It already knows it's a string because we absolutely and explicitly declared that it is a string. So what does TypeScript do with this new information that yes, it's definitely a string? And whether we infer or of course, implicitly declare here or explicitly declare it, TypeScript would be the one to infer. But even if I do not explicitly state, TypeScript is going to infer that data type. And now if I try to set my name equal to a number 42, you can see the compiler does not like that at all. We get our red squiggly here saying, hey, you're doing something wrong. This is supposed to be a string. So when I mouse over, we get some more help from TypeScript. And it says type number is not assignable to type string. So this would normally be a completely legal operation 
in JavaScript where we could use the let keyword to declare a variable and then reassign a different value that is a different data type, but not with TypeScript. This is something TypeScript does not like you to do. So at this point, we know we need to assign a string here and only a string type. So we could go ahead and once again, declare that this is a string. Likewise, we don't have to assign a value at all. We can just say, here's a variable that I am going to assign string data to, even though I don't do it immediately. And so now my name equals 42 still doesn't work. This would need to be a string. So my name would equal Dave, and now TypeScript is happy. Now it's worth noting that this does not prevent us changing the value, as that is totally permissible. We could change my name to John, and it's still okay because John is still a string. So it doesn't prevent you from assigning another value, say as if we were to use the const keyword here instead of let, of course that would not allow reassignment. However, using let is completely okay in JavaScript and we can reassign another string type, but it has to be a string type because that's what we said we're using. And I'll get rid of this line that says Dave right here. I'll go back to what we originally did, which was assigning the value right away, but it does not have to be done this way as we demonstrated. So let's go ahead and create some other types here as well. So I'll say let meaning, if I could spell meaning of life, and we'll make that a number. And then we'll say let is loading, like we were to have an is loading state. And we'll say that's a Boolean type. Now notice we haven't assigned any values there yet. So underneath, I'll say, the meaning of life equals 42, and then is loading is going to be equal to true. And those are all okay, but is loading, of course, couldn't be a number type because it's definitely a Boolean type. So it needs to be true or false. Likewise, meaning of life couldn't be a string. So if we were to say code, that's no good because it has to be a number. Now there's one more basic type we should cover here. So I'm going to create another variable and I'll call this album. And instead of assigning a specific value here, I'm just going to say any. This is a type, the any type. Now in some ways this will just simply defeat TypeScript because it allows any type of value. So for album, if I wanted to say album, is equal to, oh, let's say Van Halen. That's fine, it's a string, but we could also use a number like 1984. And TypeScript is fine with this value being a number. We could even say true, and it's fine with that because this is the any data type. And when we mouse over with IntelliSense, you can see let album up here. I mouse over, it says let album is the any type. That means it can be any data type. And you can see how that essentially defeats JavaScript. At, I said JavaScript, TypeScript. But at the same time, that doesn't mean it's bad because there are some times you may need to use the any type. And there could be a time, say, that you're not sure what type of data you will be receiving. So that may be one instance. But just keep this in the back of your mind for now that the any type does exist. And while you do not want to use it all the time because you would be defeating the purpose of TypeScript, there may be some specific times where you would need to use that any type. Okay, now let's create a function. I'm going to call this function sum, and it's going to receive two parameters, a and b. And then inside of the function, we're just going to return a plus b, which would be the sum of the parameters. You and I would look at this and assume this is a function that adds two numbers together. And I might even typically name these parameters num1 and num2 to indicate that they were numbers. However, that's not what is happening here with TypeScript. And you can see the little squiggly lines under A and B. So let's see what information we get from the IntelliSense about these function parameters. As I mouse over A, it says parameter A implicitly has the any type. So when TypeScript can't figure out exactly what data type you may want there, it's going to assign the any type. If we mouse over B, we're going to get that same message. Parameter B implicitly 
as the any type because we can use the plus symbol in JavaScript as concatenation. So we could pass in a string and a number and it would be a completely legal JavaScript operation. So TypeScript just isn't sure what we want to do here. But we could say that A is definitely a number, and let's go ahead and give that space there. And then we could say B is also a number, and let's see what TypeScript does. It seems to be happy now, no red squiggly lines. So let's mouse over the function sum and see what it says. It says it receives two parameters, A and B, that are both numbers. And it also says, as you see at the far right, it's going to return a number. So TypeScript can infer what a function is going to return based on what it knows about the function. And it knows it is receiving two number parameters and it returns the sum of those numbers. So let's change this up and let's say B is supposed to be a string. So now we have a number and a string, which is still completely legal in JavaScript and TypeScript. We'll just mouse over sum once again, and now we can see a difference. It says sum receives a number and a string, and it's going to definitely return a string. TypeScript can once again infer that what will be returned when you add a number and a string together is a string data type. So there's one more type we need to cover, and let's go ahead and do that. And instead of the any type, up here now, I'm going to make this a union type and I'm going to say album can be a string or it can be a number. This is a union type and we could of course say or again and put another type and so on, but this lets TypeScript know that this variable is going to hold a string or a number and either one is okay. This is called a union type. So now you can see album is still good when it has 1984. But once again, we could say that it is called Van Halen and TypeScript is still good with the value of album. No red squiggly line from the compiler now. But if we said album is true, then we once again have a problem. So it can only be a string or a number. So let's give it the 5150 album name from Van Halen. Once again, TypeScript is just fine. So let's switch this back to any just so we have it in the course here. And besides that, underneath, I'll define a couple of new data types that could possibly be string or numbers. Let's say we have a post ID, and we're going to say that could be a string or a number. Let's say we were working with an API that returns the post IDs as strings, and we're going to work with them as numbers, and we just set it up this way with a union type. And of course, I'm just making up a fake a reason to do this right now, just something off the top of my head. But this is something you could have a union type for, a post ID. Also, you could have, say, a is active value, and this might be a number, or it might be a Boolean type. That's because sometimes Boolean, true and false, is referred to with a zero for false and a one for true, but you might want to handle it with a number or the words true and false as Boolean. And so this is something you might assign a union type for. Again, I'm just kind of making that up as I go, but I think those are reasonable instances where you may want to assign the union type where it could be two different data types. Or remember, a union type can be more than just two different data types. So we could also come over here and say string, and this would still be completely legitimate uh, TypeScript also for a union type. I'm going to remove that now, but just know that it is not limited to only two data types when you create a union type. And now I'm going to use one more example that is not necessarily a basic data type, but it's just something that's good to know about TypeScript and how it can help you when you're taking an existing project and converting it to TypeScript. So I'm going to say let RE, which is going to stand for regular expression, but I'm not going to assign that or I'm not going to declare what type it is. I'm just going to assign it a regular expression here. So I'm going to say slash W plus and then make that global. So this is a regular expression that would select basically all words. And now we don't know what to assign this. So if I'm converting an existing project and I'm unsure what data type is a regex, 
we could mouse over and use the IntelliSense and you can see TypeScript infers and it says it's a regex type. So let's go ahead and give that here regular expression is what that stands for. So that is the accurate type. TypeScript actually tells you what you can put. And using inference when TypeScript infers, that is okay too. But as we learn, I think it's good to go ahead and assign the different data types as well. So the basic types we've covered today, string, number, boolean, and any, as well as union types. And we've even seen a regular expression type and we have seen what a function might also return in addition to what it receives as parameters. And overall, how IntelliSense can really help us and how it continues to help other developers that are working with your code. Now, in the next tutorial, we'll be covering objects, arrays, tuples, and enums. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.